Good afternoon, everyone. It is 3 p.m. in the beautiful country of the Netherlands, and today we are all over the world to talk about one of the hottest, one of the coolest, one of the most interesting topics in optical communication, when the light travels free space. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to welcome to the epic online technology meeting on Li-Fi and free space communications. Now I'm going to start with a company in Israel, Sivan Elkana. Elkana, we just heard a really nice presentation from Airbus. What do you think we could do together between Sivan, Epic and Airbus? Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Jose and Guy Mayo, for the great segue. My name is Elkana Belzinai with Sivan Technologies, and I'm very happy to meet you today to talk about FSO, which we see as a major growth engine for us. Uh, we know that uh, FSO uh, is a very challenging technology and there are many, many disruptors uh, to the technology. Either it will be a low cloud or, or scintillations or fog or even, even the sunlight. And the results of all that is that the optical beam that is sent from the receiver to the transceiver is, is scattered. And what we actually get at the receiver is a very attenuated signal. This is, this is a big uh, challenge, challenge uh, which right now is limiting the FSO to become uh, widely spread for long distances and so on. And at Sivan, we are developing a high power laser systems. Our three major advantages are that, that we, we are uh, delivering high power single mode uh, uh, products. Uh, we are also providing products in different wavelengths. And we have, uh, uh, through technology that I'll describe, describe in a minute, we also have the capability to adjust the location of the beam. So we have a dynamic beam that we can create all different shapes uh, out of the beam. And we believe this, uh, uh, those technologies are very applicable to, to FSO. Uh, just to, in a short, in a nutshell, what the technology is about. So this is how a typical amplifier will look like. We start with a seed laser, which is very uh, low power, highly coherent uh, uh, source. We amplify it, then we divide it, we amplify it again, we run it through modulators, we amplify it once again, and then we combine it here in a, in a technology that uh, is called CBC, coherent beam combining. And then we have here a, a, a feedback mechanism. We take the signals, there are various ways to get the feedback, we run it through our algorithm, and in return, we provide all these modulators a control which enables them to shift the phase of the signal. And the outcome here, here is that all those uh, sub-beams are, are uh, combined here at the, at the output in a coherent way. And by that, we achieve uh, uh, various uh, advantages that I'll describe in a minute. In a typical system for us, the high power systems, we will typically have 1K watts in the, at the output of each amplifier. In optical uh, communication, of course, we can cope with much lower, lower power. And, and uh, in our system, we have 0 0.2 uh, watts per, per amplifier, but, but basically it's the same. Just a short explanation of the, of the technology. Let's assume we have various sources of, of lasers. So when we turn on each of them, there is a, each one is creating a, a stain which is fairly large. And when we have all of them running simultaneously, we have the accumulated chain, stain, sorry, which is, which is pretty large. By implementing our technology where we control the, the phase of each channel and by that we can control where we, we have the constructive interference, when we have the disruptive interference, we can actually consolidate or concentrate all the, all the uh, power into, into a stain, which is one fix the diameter of the accumulated uh, stain. And by that, as, as the power is multiple, is a multiple by two of the, of the diameter, actually we, we concentrate uh, the uh, energy at the level which is 36 times the energy we would have had uh, if it's spread uh, across all stain. And by that we can have high, high power in a very uh, a narrow, a narrow beam and, and the other advantage that I mentioned, we can also control the location of the beam by adjusting the place where we do the constructive and destructive interferences. Basically, we can, we can move the, the, uh, the main beam and, uh, and by that we can, uh, which is also very helpful in FSO 
communication as we can direct the beam uh, to the receiver. So, so to summarize all these, we have major benefits of the CBC, our CBC uh, technology. The first one is that we are combining the old beams in a coherent way, which means that we can, each, each sub beam is going through a different pass through the atmosphere. And each one is, is impacted differently by the turbulences effect. The fact that we control each beam separately allows us to compensate for these uh, different turbulences effect and really combine all beams at the target uh, in a coherent way. Uh, the other uh, advantage that I just mentioned is the dynamic beam. We can direct the beam to the receiver and which enables us to use smaller receiver lengths. The third one is the concentration of the transmitted power, which allows us to, to gain much how, higher uh, power density at the destination, which is of course directly translated in, into a, a range. And the fourth one, it enables us to control the level of power at the destination and, and provide the receiver a low fluctuated uh, signal. And as we know, and in our case, we, we can control it to a level to one to two dB, comparing to typical systems without this capability that would usually provide 10 to 20 dB. And as we know, communication systems are not very tolerant to fluctuation at the, at the uh, input. So this is also immediately translated into higher bandwidths and higher range. And all this uh, mechanism of uh, getting the, uh, the signal, getting the, the feedback, implement it and correct it takes 200 microseconds. And uh, taking into consideration that the atmosphere turbulence uh, frequency is one kilohertz, so we can make five cycles of correction at each turbulence uh, uh, cycle, which is which is of course uh, uh, sufficient. Another benefit that we control, we, we can compensate for a light of site stabilizations. Those systems usually are installed on building on, on buildings or towers, and we can avoid the movement of the uh, of the station. Uh, with our capabilities. Here at the, at the left, we have a, a trial we, we made uh, just some time ago. We have a, a target which is five kilometers from the, from the source. And you can see that the beam is very concentrated and very stable. This is when our algorithm is turned on. So we're, we're communicating or a, a beam of, uh, of, of laser to the target and it's very well concentrated and, and fairly stable. Now, when we turn off the algorithm, you will see that the, that the beam is, is completely scattered and the amount of, of signal to noise is, is much, much lower, which of course limits the, uh, the distance and the bandwidth. And this is, this is the main advantage uh, of, of this algorithm. So this experiment was made over five kilometers. We are right now uh, planning a target, which is 10 kilometers, where we will run 10 gigabits uh, per second. This will be the setup. Please know that all the red ones are typical communication systems. So we, we want just to use existing systems, just replace the fiber with our system. All the rest is, is standard. So, so it should be a pretty straightforward. As mentioned, the next stage will be 10 kilometers running 10 gigabit per second. But our final target is really to run 100 uh, gigabit per second uh, over this system. So just before I finish, few words about Sivan. So as said, we are developing, manufacturing, and marketing high power, high quality lasers. We were found in 2008. We are 180 employees uh, at Israel. Uh, we are working with leading customers in various fields. We are a very technology-oriented company. We have over 50 patents. And uh, we're also highly vertically integrated. So we're doing the development and also the production in-house in some cases, also the production of, of the ingredients. And the fields we are active in are uh, mostly at the area of uh, metal processing, where we have welding, drilling, and cutting applications. And we're also active at the metal additive manufacturing, which is uh, mostly 3D metal printing. And of course, FSO, which was the topic of uh, our discussion today. Thank you very much. We, we had the first presentation from, from Sivan. Uh, is this something that uh, you see there is some room for cooperation, Guy? I think we may have um, seen again. Uh, thank no. you. Yes. This is a very, very interesting presentation. Uh, indeed, uh, being combining and controlling the phase at that speed, reaching those amount of power are typically the kind of blocks that uh, 
the laser com community in space is looking for. So yes, the answer is yes, definitely. One of your challenges in your presentation work. was on the you were looking for compact systems with uh, with power efficient payloads. Actually, you put that twice yeah. because I guess it's very very important. Is there any requirements? Because Ivan would like to hear that. Any requirements on the on the size and volume of the system that you have some numbers for that? Uh, well, there are two needs. The the first need is indeed on board the satellite to recontrol the phase. Uh, uh, that would be a minor thing. The most important is to control the phase uh, on ground to, to, uh, to when you beam up the satellite from ground. So this is where uh, such a technology would be needed. So again, to, to steer and control the phase of several uh, emitters from the ground to the satellite. So on the ground, power efficiency uh, is less a constraint in terms of power consumption. Uh, one of the major constraints would be Uh, spectral quality uh, and and the and the total amount of power you can reach within a certain uh, uh, spectral density. So you want a beam which is pretty narrow spectrally and high power and 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 quite stable in terms of phase. Uh, what I saw, I saw kilohertz of of beam control phase control. That's pretty fast compared to the atmosphere. Indeed, that's the that's. Uh, 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 a factor above the, the atmosphere modulation. So that's typically the, the order of magnitude of where we would be looking for. And then the question is basically the amount of power the, inside a certain uh, uh, frequency. So having a narrow beam spectrally without power. Yeah. As far as so that, there are, there are many, many other people who want to, to, to tell you things. I have